Welcome back. What a show we have this morning. Focus on women, women in society, what they are up to. And the largest gathering of African women is set to happen next week in Nairobi. This is under the auspices of the African Women in Media. There's a big conference from Thursday next week. And some of the issues they'll be looking at tackling include those facing women in media and media in Africa more widely. Joining me in studio to have that discussion. I'll start with my far left there, Adele Onyango, a media personality and the founder of the Adele Onyango Initiative. We've been trying to have her on the show before. <laughs> Finally, she's here. Karim I'm Busana. here now. Thank you. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. And next to her, one of the reasons why African Women in Media is happening in Nairobi, co-founder and CEO, Dr. Yemisi Akinbobola. I believe I haven't butchered that. <laughs> yeah, second name. Doctor. Perfect. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And welcome to Kenya again. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about African Women in Media. Uh, and, I'll start, and I'm going to be controversial from the very beginning. I haven't heard of African men in media. Well, so maybe you should create one. Maybe I should create <laughs> yeah. one. Wow, okay. I have to be careful with the questions I ask. So what was the motivation for the formation of, of this group? Well, um, I started thinking about setting up the network around 2015. Okay. And this was around the time I'd been running my news website, IQ for News, for four years at this point, or five years at this point. And it was getting to a point where I really wanted to step things up and be more innovative in, and impactful in the media industry. And I searched for a supportive network that could help me through that process, mm -hmm. right? As a female mm. media entrepreneur, it can be quite lonely, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so there was no network to support me through that. So that was kind of the initial thinking stage towards what we have today. What you have today. Yeah. Is what you have today different from what you started, planned with, envisioned? What's been the transformation over the last, what, three years? Yeah, so, um, well, I kind of took this approach of polling our membership. So it started off as a very simple Facebook group. Right? Okay. Um, I didn't really do much with it at the beginning until the year we, I won the CNN award and there was a lot of discussion about where are the African women working in the media and how are we supporting them and I was kind of like oh I have a Facebook group you know of that yeah. thing and so I, then I started inviting more people and based on that kind of their feedback and the, ch the problems and issues they were raising we started developing an agenda so we did our first event in 2017 which was a small symposium in Birmingham UK mm -hmm. which is where I live um, and work um, and so then the feedback from that event was really positive they said we wanted more of this mm. longer events more activities going on mm. we want workshops and so many other things so then we did the second one last year in Nigeria and so now the plan is to make it an annual touring conference on so the African continent on the African on continent, the African continent. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to do it in Birmingham the first time because I was eight months pregnant oh you were eight? okay <laughs> no, that does make a lot of sense and before I bring Adele in to talk about some of the topics that will be discussed next week any achievements anything that you can say so far in three years you're really proud about I'm really proud about the kind of professional development for our members for the people that have attended our conferences we've had um, people who as a result of attending conferences have launched their career so our MC last Last year became a radio personality in Lagos as a result of mm. being an oh, MC, being on, an the MC. Okay. on the conference. And we had a PhD student whose research was around maternal communication. And so because she presented at the conference, there was a film producer there who was producing a documentary around maternal um, issues. So they invited her as a consultant on the film. Connections. The film. Exactly. Your platform providing connections exactly, for people. Exactly, exactly. So that's been the biggest, I think, achievement and just that creating that network and having members who truly commit to empowering mm. each other and supporting each other. Because there's that narrative of, you know, women don't support don't, women. Yeah. That's a lie. And that was being discussed just <laughs> yeah. now, you know, on the other side of the studio. Yeah. And, and Adele, let me bring you in. So you play quite a role next week. Yes. We've known you in Kenya as a radio presenter for the last, what, nine years? Or yeah, nine and a half years. And a half years yeah. and one of the topics you'll be talking about and I saw this question online tweeted by you can media tell stories that enhance accountability and not shame victims is that yeah. something that you'd like to touch on next week and, and why is that important for you I think it's very important for me because um, I'm no stranger first and foremost to conversations around women women's issues and particularly gender-based violence rape and most recently femicide mm -hmm. and i think media plays such a key role in storytelling how do we tell these stories right how do we start triggering people to do almost like a cultural audit i call it to be like this is not working all right especially for women and i think these conversations could have started earlier if we had enough women representation in certain positions in media so when we're talking about editing who so not sets just the in agenda media in general but in, yeah, in those key positions exactly okay. I think it's important not only to have women in front office, 
Okay. You know what I mean? Like the face, but to be, be behind the scenes. Decision makers. Decision makers leading actual media houses, setting the agenda and being included in what stories are going to be told and how we're going to tell those stories. So you're concerned when the editors' guilds take a photo and you, can't, you can barely count the number of women exactly. in, in a photograph, mm -hmm. for example. Or you have a panel. It happened last <laughs> oh, week. Okay. You Here have we a go. panel <laughs> talking about the future of media in Kenya and it's four men. Yeah. And then the only woman is the moderator. <laughs> if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yes. So I don't think that's right. I don't think that's fair. And I don't think that actually grows the media industry and in effect actually influences policy change or any other change that we want to see in our country, in our continent. And um, so I think that the conference is really important. So I'm yeah. so glad I'm going to be part of it. I'm sitting on a panel that's talking about sexual harassment and global movements. We've seen the success of things like Me Too. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for other people who are working in the field, such as myself? Um, I'm also running a workshop, my first time Is ever running. Is it the one dubbed a perspective? Perspective. Yes. To actually start doing exercises that trigger you know, people in the media to start thinking about how stories are told and where exactly is the problem. Because when you say it, you don't see the problem in the story. Or for example... Um, well, what concern, can you give us an example? Uh, and you don't have to refer to a specific person or something. Yes. But what, did you ever see something and you thought to yourself, that's not the way things should be? Yeah. So first that panel. And then secondly, okay, yeah, so uh, ready <laughs> to stories, I, I think there's a, there's a problem, especially with femicide. I mean, we're over, we're getting closer to 50, right? 50 women we've lost this year alone to femicide. Clearly we have a problem. But when... It's like eight women a month. Yes. Yeah. Easily. Um, yeah. And so when we're telling those stories, the conversation it always morphs into, they were in a relationship. What did she do? He, what did she do? To deserve this. It seems he sent her a phone. You know, and mm -hmm. how we tell those stories really influences. It's not coming out to say the victim is to blame, but you're influencing people to start thinking yeah. along, those, um, along those lines. Not really thinking about culturally, where have we gone wrong? Mm. What is the problem? And I think in that space, and I've been part of the media, I still am with online radio, we have failed. And we have to say, we have failed. Mm. How do we rectify this? At, the, at, at least with the media, and I want you to come in on this, you can, you can, there are ways in which you can gatekeep what they do. Mm. Cyberspace, online. Yeah. And you've talked about cyberbullying quite a bit. Will that tie in with your discussion next week briefly? I think so, because Perspective for me is a podcast and a workshop. And it's an audiovisual podcast that I run. And it's a safe space for men and women to come together and have these conversations on gender issues. Episode one was on femicide. And we cut up the clips and we share them online because that's a forum to get people also thinking mm -hmm. and holding the media accountable, yeah. holding their leaders accountable as well. The next time anybody who either came for the viewing, or the, the recording or watched it, the next time there's a case on femicide, we hope there's not a next time. But if they see a story being reported, they'll be like, wait, this shouldn't have happened like this because I remember that I watched something that triggered me to start thinking, you to open to my mind, yeah, right. to yeah. open my mind. So I think um, the cyber, uh, cyberspace is very important, but you see the- It's very hard to regulate as It's well. hard to regulate, it's hard to regulate, but you can start getting people thinking. And I think it starts there, okay. right? That's yeah. an interesting point. You've been bubbling with, with thoughts. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add to what Adele said about kind of the language used in media content. Mm. It's really important. So, for example, last year, our theme for the conference was visibility. And particularly, we were looking at visibility of female political mm. candidates. And one of the newspapers in Nigeria was reporting about the one of the female presidential candidates. And the headline was, mother of, I think, mother of five. Oh my goodness. You know, yeah announces a, a, a contest contestant for the um, presidential mm. election. And yeah, it, was, it was like, well, why is the fact that she's a mother of five a part of yeah, the conversation? To begin why, with, exactly, yeah. Why not just focus on the fact that she's a legitimate presidential candidate and leave it at that, you know? So those kind of headlines, kind of more gender sensitive mm. and less kind of biased in the, in the, in the construction of the narrative, right, that we use and the mm. words that we, that we use to describe um, female professionals, mm. right? And using words like, you know, hot, hot, um, yeah. hot politician. Yeah, hot politician. <laughs> you use that for a man. Exactly. You know, that kind of thing. Wow. And the truth of the matter is that's not the only challenge that women in media face. So, I mean, according to the latest 2019 World Press Freedom Index, only four African countries have satisfactory media freedom. 
Kenya is not one of them, <laughs> according to those who, who ranked the media there. How does this impact African women in media? It, in fact, it impacts all journalists, but, but specifically for African women. What challenges are shared to you, you know, when yeah. you have these conferences yeah, about I, operating on the continent? Yeah, I think in particular with the, with the theme of our conference being showcased, it's important that in those conversations, when we're in, trying to influence policy, we're trying to influence change, we need to ensure that women have are part of the voices that have been heard mm -hmm. as experts in these areas, mm -hmm. right? Um, press freedom is, <laughs> is one of those issues that it's an ongoing process, you know, and we've made a lot of headway. We're, we're moving towards the right direction. We're not quite there yet. There's still a lot of things we need to address. But in that conversation, make sure there's a good representation of the population, yeah. the voices, the the fifty percent of the of the population are women. So make sure in that panel of you know four, four people, yes. fifty percent are women. Are, women. are, women. Yeah. are there things you feel you can say in Birmingham, England? But when you get onto the African continent, you start thinking, okay, if I say this, how will it sound? Will, will the government be concerned? Etc. It's almost self censorship. Um, on, yeah, I suppose to an extent you always got to think about your family, you know, how's what you're going to say impact on your family. Um, but generally I try to just be, say what I want to say, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, but I think there's always that thing in the back of your mind of impact beyond just yourself. As a journalist, you can, you, you can own the responsibility for yourself and perform your, professional, your, prof your profession the way you want to. But when you have a family, you know, those it's kind of things, ball game it's a different altogether. ball game, so you, you are a bit more conscious. You are a bit more conscious. And yeah. of course, let you know, the conference starts uh, Thursday next week. Some of the speakers there will be our very own Yvonne Okwara, I believe. Yeah. Jamila Mohammed yeah. also will be there as well and several others. So, um, you know, as you give us your final thoughts, why should, you know, more women in media attend the conference? What should they look out for? Um, I think because it's going to be such a powerful gathering of, of African women in media speaking and, about and issues that affect them. Well. Uh, UON, the mm -hmm. Towers. University of Maryland. Yeah, okay. um, and, and, and I think also uh, what they need to look out for that I'm also excited about is the pitch zone. Yeah. So they get access to pitch to all of these various networks from um, so many different countries and wow. they get to pitch um, ideas of stories that they oh. want to see yeah. so gonna, come to life. Yeah. We're going to have um, international media organizations mm. that listen to pitches, CNN, BBC, Voice of America, but we also have the German Development Agency and the International Organization for Migration together with the African Union who are going to give $2,000 grants to the mm. best pitch stories. My goodness, yeah, all so happening. And so it's from Thursday to when? And Thursday to Saturday next week, so that's the 25th to the 27th of July at the University of Nairobi Towers. At the University of Nairobi Towers. Yeah. I'm always afraid to ask this question. Is there an entry fee? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to. You, you, you have to invest. <laughs> you have yeah. to invest. If you want to get benefit. And so, if someone wants more information, I'm sure there's a link they can go yes, to. Yes, you can go to awim19.africanwomeninmedia.com. Awim, A W I M 19. Yes. Dot African women in media .com. to get more information. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I hope much. you enjoy your stay in Kenya. Keep coming back. I will do. <laughs> I, love, I love Nairobi. It's Thank amazing. You. Thank you so much. And you do, you've come with good people. So that's been Dr. Yemisi Akimbobola, the co-founder and CEO, African Women in Media. Big event next week for an organization that's barely three years old. Fantastic job mm -hmm. to Thank you, you for that. Much. And one of the speakers there who's running uh, you know, several platforms there will be Adele Onyango, media personality and founder of the Adele Onyango Initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you. For both of you for finding us. time and for watching this program as well. We take a quick break now. When we return, I believe there's some music. Oh, no, no. Web Wars. Kimani Mbogwa. He's talking about what's been trending online. And after that, uh, DJ T-Boy will bring you the latest music as we take you to 9 o'clock. Stay tuned. You're watching Daybreak. <laughs>